up. I got a big mouth, you know. All right. We want to thank everybody for coming out to the meet and greet tonight. And uh, this is kind of how it's going to go. We're going to begin with the introductions. After the introductions, each candidate will be given five minutes to state their vision for the office and, the, and for Ohio County. We will choose the order by drawing a number. And the lowest number will speak first. This will be followed by a short question and answer session. The potential questions will be written down and turned in, and then they'll be drawn from the bowl, as long as time permits. When a question is asked, all candidates for the office to which the question pertains will have two minutes to respond. After the forum is over, the audience will be able to talk to the candidates one-on-one -on -one to discuss any issues that were not covered in the forum. We'd like to thank all the candidates for participating in our program, and we'd like to thank all the members of the audience for coming. Let's remember we're all here because we love Ohio County, and let's make this a pleasant and informative meeting, please. Right now, uh, Mr. Daniel Miller from McLean County is going to introduce candidates. Thank you very much. My name is Daniel Miller. Actually, I'm from Muhlenberg County. <laughs> I work in McLean County, but I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to welcome each one of you out. We'll start with introducing our candidates. C.B. Emery, Jr., Republican candidate for Kentucky State Senate. <laughs> William Cox, Democrat, Democrat candidate for Kentucky State Senate. Marion Turley, Republican candidate for Kentucky House of Representatives. Tommy Thompson, Democrat candidate for Kentucky House of Representatives. David Johnson, Republican candidate for the Judge Executive. Brandon Thomas, Democratic candidate for the Tracy Beatty, Republican candidate for sheriff. David Thompson, Democratic candidate for sheriff. Sam Small, incoming first district magistrate. Larry Arnold, Republican candidate for the second district magistrate. Jason Bullock, Democrat candidate for 2nd District Magistrate. Jason Burton, Republican candidate for 3rd District Magistrate. Joe Barnes, Democrat candidate for 3rd District Magistrate. That will be all candidates. Mark Fleener, Judge Kentucky Court of Appeals. I'm going to begin with the candidates for magistrate. First district incoming magistrate, Sam Small. Second district Republican candidate, Larry Arnold, or Democratic candidate, Jason Boyd. Beaver Dam and surrounding areas. The reason I'm running for magistrate, I think that the main reason is 
for to watch over the county uh, finances because Ohio County is big business and being uh, in business for over 38 years I felt like I could do a good job at helping uh, run the county I also support economic growth um, for the county and support coal and all other businesses uh, in the county um, also, I would support and really support uh, the senior citizens of Ohio County. There's over 9 million seniors in the United States that go hungry. And I think anything that we can do to help that cause um, can start right here in Ohio County. I support the youth and the youth activities and I support all activities for youth. I think we need other things for the youth to do in the county. Um, and I support the first responders, the fire department, uh, the EMS, and the ambulance services. Those are very vital to, uh, to us uh, when, when we need one. I know from experience we had a fire right across the street from us. The fire department was there. They lost the house because it was 3 o'clock in the morning when it broke out. But they were there the whole night uh, with them, with the family, in and out. And uh, I thought they did a super good job. And I was told in public speaking that you stand up tall, well, which I can't do that, um, but you speak loud and then you shut up. So thank you all very much. I want to say thank you for turning out this good crowd. Appreciate everybody coming out and supporting uh, this uh, event. Thank you ladies for putting it on. Larry, I appreciate you. It's been a uh, positive campaign. I appreciate positive campaigns. Uh, I'm running as the incumbent. I really enjoy what I do. I enjoy, like uh, like Larry was saying, youth is one of my uh, one of my areas. If you want to ask me what I what I look for and what I like the most to uh, support is the youth. Another one's education, uh, economic growth, economic growth. If you educate the youth, which uh, we're looking into doing, if we educate our youth. That's what's going to build economic growth. We're going to continue to put money into it. Uh, as you know, as the last quarter, we, um, we started OCETA. We took money from coal, which is a blessing in our community. We've been able to do a lot of wonderful re things with uh, the coal resources. Um, economic growth was one of them by forming OCETA and actually putting money where we have a full-time person out looking for Ohio County. It's one of the first times we've ever done that. And uh, if you're not out looking for it and you're not putting your dollar uh, in the right places, we're going we're gonna to get left behind. It, nothing might not ever come out of it, but uh, that's one of the things I'm proud of the most is Oceda and our working with economic growth. Our infrastructure was our infrastructure is good. Uh, the last court we have new sewer, new water plants. Uh, we have a great, great um, industrial park out there, sitting in a great location. We just need the right people, the right resources for, uh, promoting us. Um, as far as the um, EMS. Uh, Fire department, we have an EMS building. It's uh, have a new EMS site. We've actually bought new ambulances. I think um, last court we bought three. Uh, this court we bought some. As far as the fire department, we support our fire department. The first court that I was on, we went from five thousand dollars a fire department to twenty thousand dollars a fire department. It's very important to have a strong fire department. As you know, it brings your ratings down for your. Uh, homeowners insurance. So to continue to support that is, a, is a, an important thing. Uh, this court, we've been putting fire hydrants out. Fire hydrants are a wonderful thing now. We've got water lines to most people in the community, but now there are resources we're taking and putting towards fire hydrants. That also brings your rates down and it brings your safe. It's, it's safe for you to have those in your community. Um, again, I enjoy working for uh, Ohio County. I enjoy representing the city of Beaver now have great relationship with them. I encourage any of you to please ask any EMS firefighter or city official how they feel our relationship is and what I've done for them. Um, Ohio County is important to me and so is Beaverdown. 
uh, I would appreciate your support on November 4th. Thank you. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I do want to reiterate what Larry and Jason both said. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Jason Burden. Most of you don't know me. Uh, I'm 36 years old, uh, resident of Cronos, uh, suburb of Centertown. Uh, some of you probably know where that is. Um, been there all my life. And I'm the Republican candidate for 3rd District Magistrate. For those of you who do not know where the 3rd District is, basically it's Rockport, McHenry, Centertown, Beta, with some other outlying areas, but it's a big district. If you, if you, if you don't believe me, ask Joe or myself, we'll tell you it's a big district. Um, a little bit about myself, uh, 2000 graduate of Western Kentucky University with a degree in agriculture. Since then I've been involved in retail, uh, wholesale, uh, sales, service, promotion, uh, trade shows, I've done all that. So that, I think that was some good qualities that would, would help me be a good magistrate to serve you all. And, and not only the district that I just outlined, but the whole county. I'm all about the county. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that, promise you this and promise you that, because it would probably be broken promises. Uh, there's, there's no need of someone getting up here and saying, well, I want to fix your road, or I want to clean your ditch, or I want to do this or do that. Uh, this is all new to me. I hear it every day. Are you sure you want to do that? I hear it every day. Have you been to a fiscal court meeting? But I have, and yes, I do. And someone asked me back early, said, what, what made you want to you know, decide to do this? You know, I look back and... I'm no politician, as you can tell. Uh, I'm not real good at public speaking. But I said, in, in no no discrimination to anybody that is a master or has, has run for master, but to me, if you have common sense, if you make good decisions that benefit the county, you're not going to please everybody. I can sit up here right now and tell something that I, I'm going to do. I'm going to promise to do this. Well, a third of you is going to be mad about it, and the other two thirds may be happy or vice versa. So you're never going to please anybody. I've done found that out on the campaign trail. So whatever you say is going to be wrong in somebody's eyes. But if you have common sense, represent the county, do what you think is best, and be available. This phone, you can ask my wife, does never leave my side. It stays by me 24-7, and if you call me, I'll answer. Or wake up and then answer. But, like I said, I support the fire stations. I support growth in Ohio County. I support coal. Uh, I want what's best for the county. I want my children to come back here and my grandchildren. I don't want to have to drive eight hours or three states to see my grandkids. I want them to come back and grow up here. I mean, we live on a small farm. I'm just a little country boy. And, you know, you all gonna walk out my front door and be chickens on the front porch. Uh, most kids go to the zoo, my kids just go outside. And, and that's just the way we live, and that's, that's the way I like it. And uh, I just want to serve the county, do what's best for the county. And, and do what the citizens want me to do. Thank you. Our next speaker is Democratic candidate Joe Barnes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Joe Barnes, third district pastor candidate for Democratic Party. Uh, I grew up in Ohio County, lived here all my life, graduated from Ohio County High School in 2001. I was at the president in my senior year, went on to uh, OCC Community College and obtained two associate's degrees, and went on further to uh, Western Kentucky University and got a bachelor's degree in geography and a minor in surveying. Been married to my wife for 11 years, Carrie Kessinger from the Centertown area. We have an eight-year-old daughter, Chloe Barnes, that she attends Western Elementary. She's in second grade. I do uh, surveying engineering work as my profession. Been doing that for about 10 years now. Started out a bigger staff board in Hartford. 
moved to Matt, uh, Associate Engineers in Madisonville, Kentucky, and then uh, currently work for Armstrong Coal Company as a surveyor, engineer, field, in the field, I guess you'd say, be the best term. That's how I kind of got interested in doing the master's job, my background in surveying and engineering. I thought I had the tools to rely on, on looking at road issues and what kind of issues we have with the roads and how we're going to fix them. I've been going to the county meetings for about a year when I decided I was going to start running for the magistrate. Got interested in more details on the, on the county matters. And um, I think the best thing I could do is be 100% involved. The, like Jason said, the third district is a very big district. And uh, within that district, you actually have three cities. You have McHenry Center Town and Rockport. So uh, you also got three fire departments, and you've also got a substation out in the Beta area. And I think the best thing you can do to be involved is to attend those meetings and the city meetings, the entities within our, my district, and uh, represent them the best I can. The uh, other issues I really have is um, looking at what we can do for the youth. I really want to look at community parks, how we can support them and, and give them the aid that we need to give them for our children. And uh, it would be a be an honor to represent the third district as your master. And I hope that if anybody has any questions afterwards, will come and talk to me. I'll be glad to talk and uh, answer any questions I can. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to move to the sheriff's race. Republican candidate Tracy Beatty, the Democratic candidate David Thompson. Well, good evening. And again, I too want to thank you for being here tonight. It's, it's great that you folks come out and interested in county government and what's going on. Uh, Barbara, Beth, and I appreciate all the hard work that you guys have done, the ladies here, to, to get this thing together. So we really do appreciate that. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is David Thompson, and you elected me as your sheriff four years ago. I have a, my beautiful wife, Kay, sitting up front. Have five uh, wonderful children, one of them up front also, and uh, three gorgeous, wonderful grandchildren. Uh, which I might add that one of them uh, became Miss Teen Ohio County, which I'm very proud of this past weekend at the fair. I um, graduated the uh, FBI Law Enforcement Training Academy. I had 27 years of law enforcement experience. I graduated from the uh, Criminal Justice Executive Development course, which is done at the uh, the, the uh, Department of Criminal Justice training. So, with that being said, uh, some of the most important experience that you probably need to know is that I've been your sheriff for four years. And during that time that I was campaigning the first time going out, there were some certain things that you folks wanted me to do. And uh, I guess that's why that, that you elected me like you did, because you felt that I was going to do that. And so we have done several things over the past four years, and before I tell you where I want to go, I think it's important to know where we've been. And so with that, uh, first off, we have staffed our office with professional, well-trained, dedicated people to serve you. That's very important when those people know what they're supposed to be doing when you come in um, to, to be waited on. We improved the tax office by installing computers and barcode readers to where uh, before, Tony, when you come in and have five or six different uh, tax bills, it might take 20 minutes to find them because you're going through books. Well, now when you come in, regardless of how many properties you have, it takes two or three minutes to get in and out of there. We think that's important, especially if you're coming in at lunch. We've complied with the Department of Homeland Security's recommendations on security of this courthouse. They come into play uh, just recently uh, when Steve had uh, Mitch McConnell here. Uh, their people come to me and, and uh, was was astonished that, that we 
could have had a place of, if things went south, where we could bring the senator and keep them safe. So we're very proud of that. We investigate all complaints. We are now a full, sir, a full service sheriff's office. We, uh, we are honored to assist you people with your problems. And we don't turn anybody away. We are aggressive in investigating and arresting dangerous drug dealers. We're also uh, aggressive in investigating and making it safer for our children by investigating sexually abused cases. We've actually brought over 500 charges in the past four years to children that have been abused. We routinely, routinely, routinely report what we do to you folks. I know sometimes uh, uh, a lot of people say, well, you're always on pay in the paper, you're always on the radio. Well, I think uh, it's a disservice if we don't let you know. You deserve to know. You deserve to know. No, you deserve to know what your sheriff office is doing. So that's why we do that. And we also operate a Facebook page because there are some things that you folks need to know that, that has to be very timely. Whether there's a robbery going on or something going on in your part of the world, you can look up our Facebook and be able to, to find out what's going on. We also are very proud of the adopt -a school program. Uh, basically, that's where every one of my deputies have adopted a school within the county here. Um, that We're very proud of that. Just just over the couple of weekends ago, we was in Fordsville. Uh, had a young girl, about six years old, run up to to uh, uh, Chase. Chase is about seven, eight foot tall there. Pretty scared to young kids. Went over there and just grabbed him and hugged him. The parents said, now, honey, he said, if you ain't good, he's going to take you to jail. This little six, seven-year-old girl turned around and said, no, he's not going to take me to jail. He said, he's in my classroom all the time. We're friends. That's what we're after, and that's what we're proud of. We have a canine unit at the Ohio County Sheriff Office, and we're very proud of that. This is actually recognized. Uh, through our certifications, we've been recognized by our, your dog as one of the uh, number five dog in the United States when it comes to narcotics. We've uh, also... Um, have done the badges and blessings and that was started by our deputies who wanted to help 25 families last year at christmas time and it turned out when we were done there was 200 families there was 200 families done so they're telling me that my time's done so uh i, I guess basically uh i just want to say i really appreciate i'm humbled to be your sheriff i uh, didn't get into to where i want to go with you maybe we can talk to that after um uh, this is done, and um, God bless you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Beatty. Um, I want to appreciate uh, all that you have done to get this together. I want some big things to put together. We appreciate what you've done to help us get our ideas out there to the public. So we, we commend you on your job of getting this put together. It's a big, big deal. Uh, thank you all for taking your time to come here tonight, too, and uh, and listen to our ideas and and uh, sit in amongst us and, and, and let us share what we believe uh, to be the best idea for our county. <clears throat> Again, my name is Tracy Beatty. I've been in law enforcement here in Ohio County for 20 years. Uh, I currently work for the Beaver Dam Police Department. Uh, I've been with them about a little over a year. Um, I worked for two different administrations. Uh, one of those administrations was for Sheriff Thompson. Um, I, I commend the sheriff. We, I think we've kept our race uh, clean and fair and I will continue to do that throughout uh, the next month. Uh, I think a lot of the sheriff uh, worked for him and, and he treated me well, so I can't say anything bad about him here tonight. Um, I'm not here to pick his office apart or, or, or be, belittle his deputies or his administration. It's just a, a difference in opinions on how the office should be ran. <clears throat> One of those ideas I have uh, is an open door policy. I believe if you would let me as your sheriff that you should be able to come in to my office whenever you're needing the sheriff uh, and, and there shouldn't be any uh, obstacles to go through to get to me. And I assure you that if I'm elected that I will 
open that door to where you, you can come down and see me. Um, we, we have always in the past, in, in, in the years that I have worked here, we have set up community meetings for the, our seniors in Ohio County. Uh, we put together a neighborhood watch program. That neighborhood watch program we use to go over different ideas and, and different education that we have for our seniors. One of those ideas uh, would be to inform our seniors of the scams that we currently have in place. You know, we had uh, some guys painting barns and just to mention a few, uh, there's been a lottery scam here that, that a lot of our seniors have been out money over. So uh, we use those neighborhood watch meeting uh, to inform our seniors uh, along with uh, a CERT program. The CERT program we helped put together uh, right before the ice storm we had and it really it really brought a lot of our seniors and our, our communities together during the ice storm we had. Um, and and I, I, I'm proud to say that I was a part of that along with Buddy Shrewsbury uh, which spearheaded the program uh, here in Ohio County. We joined together with OCAMP uh, which is a meth prevention uh, group uh, that we've put together. I'm proud to say that I'm on the board of OCAMP and uh, we plan on uh, hooking it back in with the sheriff's office and, and using that as an educational tool in our schools. Um, I've met with a group of teachers. Um, we are working on a program to put our DARE program back in our schools. It will be a, a, a program that is research based and it will be a continued education program. It will be a daily talk program. I've, I've talked with the school, I've talked with the uh, superintendent and those are things that we think we is most important to me in my campaign is to get a prevention program for drugs back in our schools. <clears throat> Along with that we will, we will join together as a unified team with our local police departments, Hartford and, and Beaver Dam, along with the Kentucky State Police. I've been and talked to the captain at the Kentucky State Police Post, and they have told us that anything we can do to join with them, they are more than willing to help us with our drug program here. And they have sources available that we can use uh, in that to combat our drugs. Um, <clears throat> another, another issue that, that I think is important to our seniors is our scanners. I plan on opening our frequency back up to an analog system in the, in the, the side of a day-to-day -day operations where that you can hear those scanners, you can hear our operation, and you can grade us as me being your sheriff on how I'm doing. Uh, we have found those to be, we have found those to be real helpful, so uh, I, I, I'm like the sheriff. I didn't get through all I wanted to tell you, but I, I appreciate your time, and uh, I thank you for all you guys have done. Yeah, thank you. Next, we'll have the candidate for judge executive, uh, candidate for Republican candidate David Johnson, and Democrat candidate Brandon Thomas. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda, and everybody who helped put this thing together. Uh, appreciate it. Always pleased to talk to several of you at once. Uh, I want to talk to everybody one on one, but uh, at least this gives me a chance to see several of you at one time. Uh, I've served you four years as your judge executive, and during this time we've accomplished much. If you re-elect re me, we'll accomplish much more. Uh, tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in Ohio County basically all my life, except for a short stint in the Army. Uh, and I have, uh, my ancestry goes back in Ohio County as far as I can trace it. It was right here on both sides, all the way to uh, um, an ancestor that was in the uh, Revolutionary War, uh, actually at Valley Forge, and is buried in Ohio County. So uh, I've been around here a long time. 
uh, before taking uh, uh, this job, uh, I was your Parks and Recreation Director for 26 years and a month. Um, I am married. My wife's name is Barbara. She's here. Uh, she was a uh, Jones, and we've been married for 43 years. Um, so that I won't get to cut off before I tell you what I want to do, I'm going to start out with that first, and then I'll back up to some things that we have done. Um, if I'm elected for a second term, I will continue all the six successful programs and projects started in the first term. Uh, we'll pave a road to everybody's home, every road where people live, we can get it paved. And uh, what's been accomplished in this term proves that it can be done as difficult as it sounds, it's doable. I want to continue to work with the fire departments and uh, protect you uh, from fire and other emergencies. This includes more fire hydrants. Fire departments and volunteer firemen are more than just who comes and puts out your fire if your house catches on fire. They're the first ones we call on for any emergency. So to keep those volunteers' numbers up, we're going to see that they have everything they need to fight fire and to rescue and to, to stay there at that firehouse and, and uh, uh, so they'll be there when we need them. Uh, and I want to uh, make Ohio County friendly to business. As Jason touched on, we formed OCEDA, which is our... Uh, <coughs> Uh, economic development tool that we have to try to make our uh, county more available to business and more friendly to business. And we'll work with state and local and federal governments to secure the funding for those projects and to, uh, uh, and to improve our county. We'll work with uh, all players, I'm going to work with all players that to capitalize on our bluegrass music heritage I'm going to partner with the cities to make the to work with the count the county at an even better place to live. Uh, during this time, and I'm backing up again. I'm going to tell you if I have time, a whole lot of things we've done and accomplished. But the bottom line, economically for our county, we have reduced our re debt by over half a million dollars. Uh, we, in other words, we owe half a million less than we did when we come in office. And we put aside $600,000 that wasn't there before for emergencies. And we started the $100,000 a year savings account uh, to be there in case uh, uh, Cole's not always with us. A couple of the, mo the things I'm the, the proudest of, other than all the things we bought for our departments and all the roads we paved and all the bridges we built, and all the equipment we bought for all these departments, uh, I'm proud that we were able to make a, uh, an incentive for Armstrong Coal Company to uh, expand. Through our incentive, they was able to expand out of mine. Uh, not only did they uh, add almost another million dollars a year in coal severance money, but they also, from their employees in that deal, we're getting out 135000 more a year from their employees than we did before because we made that incentive package to them. And, uh, and also, like I said, the economic development uh, package, that uh, uh, economic development plan that we've uh, put in place. Thank you, and, uh, and uh, you can count on me. Come see me if you need me. Bye. Hello, it's good to see all of you here tonight. It uh, shows me that people are interested in local government. And uh, I'd also uh, like to thank everyone that's helped put this together. But more, most importantly, I'd like to, uh, all of you should uh, take a look at OC Monitor. They've done a wonderful job. So anyone that's not here tonight, pass it on to your friends that they can, uh, can watch it on the web and, and be more informed on the candidates. Um, you know, elections are important. Each and every each and every election is important, not only to us, the candidates, but to you, the citizens. 
And uh, I'm not up here tonight to give you a bunch of pretty words or make any false promises. Um, I come here tonight to give you, hopefully, that we have some good answers to give you a true understanding of each and every candidate and, and uh, just, to, just to make realistic expectations of what we together can achieve. And uh, sometimes uh, we, we all have our wants, sometimes they exceed our needs, and sometimes they exceed, uh, exceed what we can physically, uh, physically uh, under, undertake. But, uh, you know, we're all faced with uncertainties, each and every one of us in local government and everything we do, we're faced with uncertainties, but, but I have found that uh, so many of these uncertainties with a little research and a little bit of a plan and, and do a little bit of a footwork before you make these decisions and before you make purchases or, or whatever fund a certain group or whatever it may be, uh, a little bit of research will help you uh, do make more accurate predictions of what you're gonna what you're gonna out what the outcome will be. So uh, that's one thing that that I have. Uh, this court has, in my opinion, has maybe maybe not fulfilled in doing the research and, and doing the plan that that maybe should take place. So that's one of the things that I plan to do as judge executive, if elected, uh, is, is to make informed decisions based on, on our history, and it may be last year's history, it may be 20 years ago history, but, but to do a little more study to understand what it is truly we're getting into and, and what the, if the county is, is gonna incur a liability that will be here with us forever, or if it's something that's gonna truly pan out and be, be a public service. Um, with economic development and community development, uh, my philosophy, those those fall very close, very similar in the ways that, that I feel you have to make it a full circle and to, to have local government working along with our state government and working along with industry and education. That, that brings a full circle and that's one of the things that, that I have worked with as a magistrate um, to, to work with our vocational schools and to work with our state rep and our house senator to to encourage them to put funding back into our state budget so that we now have electricity teacher at the vocational school and and also have worked with local industries to get involved of the type of, of talent or the type of needs that they have so that our vocational schools can prepare them for the workforce um, i don't feel it's always most important to recruit a new industry but i feel it's just as important to make sure your industry you have here are being supplied with the people and the qualities that they need to be successful. So from that, if, you, if you're working close with your local industries and they're successful, when the day comes that another industry may be in looking at our area, that the existing industries can put in a good word for Ohio County, that we as local government and education are all working together and this is a this is a good environment for them to locate. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot. I understand uh, as being a magistrate, there's a lot more that that comes before us that most people don't realize, and, and we may even not expect. But uh, like I said, through determination, study, try to make the best decision on spending your tax dollars. I think that's the most important thing as, as being a uh, leader for this county. Um, and these things is what I will bring to you if elected to, to county judge executive. Thank you. Next we have Judge Kentucky Court of Appeals, Mark Cleaner. Uh, thank you all. I was at the uh, Fordsville days. I don't know how many of you are from Fordsville, but my my cousin, who a lot of you may may know, Jolene Hill, Jolene Hill was her name, was Jolene Johnson. Uh, suggested I try to come here, and I barely made it. I'm glad I did. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the Kentucky Court of Appeals and why I'm running for that, and a little bit about myself as well. Uh, first of all, the Kentucky Court of Appeals. Uh, I'm running in 14 counties. 
and it's terrible to run in 14 counties. I know most of you all run in one county, maybe two or three, but 14 is a real job. Uh, I run from Warren County, where I'm from, all the way up I-65, basically, to Bullock County, and then I head over the river over to Union County and hit Grayson County and Ohio County and a few other counties. It's, it's based roughly on the congressional district, except a few years ago, I think our state legislature kind of gerrymandered that a little bit. They took out, what they take out? They took out Ohio, uh, Butler County and Edmondson County, but they kept the state court the way it was. So anyway, I'm in those 14 counties running for the Kentucky Court of Appeals. Um, again, my name is Mark Fleener, and just for those of you who don't know me, which is most of you, uh, my folks are from Butler County, and uh, Osborne Fleener's my father. He's still alive. He's 88 years old and uh, doing, doing pretty well. Uh, he was more north of the river. If you're from Butler County, you might know what that means, but anyway. And then my mother is from uh, Butler County. She's from Morgantown. She was a city girl. Uh, my mother passed away when I was in, in college, but uh, my dad's still alive and doing well. Uh, I grew up in Bowling Green. Um, went to high school there, then went to Western Kentucky University, and, got a, and then after uh, undergraduate school, I went to the University of Kentucky for law school and got my degree uh, at the University of Kentucky. My one claim to fame was I was roommates, sort of. I was in the same building, dorm room, with uh, one of your judges here, Mike McCown. I don't think Mike's here this, this evening. And I'm actually the only contested judicial race on your ballot, so make sure you look for me, okay? So it'll be, it'll be hard to find on the ballot, but I'll be there. Uh, also, I just want to let you know my wife is Betsy Settle Fleener. Uh, she's from Hadley, Kentucky. Some of you may know where Hadley is. It's sort of northern Warren County. She's a, she's a country girl, and I was a city boy. I don't know how we got together. But, uh, but uh, we've been married 34 years now, have two boys. Uh, one, one son graduated from Western, and the other one's now a sophomore, we think. We're not sure about his grades, but we think he made it as a sophomore uh, at Bellarmine University up in Louisville. Uh, judges kind of have to be careful about what they say, so I'm not going to say a whole lot about my philosophy. We just uh, Judicial candidates and judges are somewhat limited, but I will say that uh, I have very conservative family values. Uh, and I think judges need to uh, interpret the law as, and the Constitution as written. Uh, other than that, I'm not going to say a whole lot more, but that will give you some idea of my philosophy. Uh, I also want to tell you a little bit about my history. Uh, after law school, I practiced law in Bowling Green and still do. Uh, I was appointed a bankruptcy trustee, a federal bankruptcy court trustee, in 1988 by the Department of Justice, which at that time was uh, overseen by, uh, well, President Reagan was the one who appointed the Attorney General, and I was fortunate enough to be appointed. And that's a one-year appointment. It's real strange. Every year they look at you and decide if they want to keep you. Uh, it's not a, and fortunately I've been able to keep that job now for about 28 years or so, something like that. So, uh, I'm, and I'm not tired of that job, but I just think I'd be able to help Kentucky and give back a little bit more if I'm elected to the Kentucky Court of Appeals. Uh, I'm admitted to all courts in Kentucky. I'm admitted to all federal courts. I'm admitted to the Kentucky Supreme Court. I'm admitted also to the United States Supreme Court. And I've had two or three cases uh, before the United States Supreme Court. Didn't win any one of them, but anyway, I tried. So anyway, I got that far. But uh, just uh, would appreciate your vote uh, November 4th. And again, I'm the, I was going to say I'm the only Fleener on the ballot in Ohio County, but I think there's a Cicero Fleener who I don't really know. He's probably related to me and spelled the same way, so I guess I'm related. But make sure you vote for Mark Fleener for the Kentucky Court of Appeals. Thank you all. Next, we have the race for Kentucky House of Representatives, Republican candidate Marion Curley, Democratic candidate Tommy Thompson. <laughs> well, good evening. It's certainly a pleasure to be here tonight. Brenda, I want to thank you and your great staff for conducting this forum. You know, with uh, all the negative advertising that we're seeing and hearing today, it's nice that we've got a chance, all these great candidates, to come and briefly share our values and our philosophies with you. So hopefully you can... <laughs> 
make the decision that's best for you in terms of who can best represent your values and be the best spokesperson for you, whether it's at the county level or the state level. I want to thank my wife, Judy, who's here, who, like a lot of these candidate spouses, uh, makes tremendous sacrifices uh, so that we can serve. And I'm not going to start by asking if you can hear me in the back. No, I did that to a group about two weeks ago. The room was quite a bit deeper, and I asked that question after I'd been speaking for about a minute. And I said, I better stop and make sure you can hear me in the back. And about that time, a lady that was 20 or 30 feet closer than this young lady in the front row stood up and addressed the people in the back and said, I can, and I'll be glad to change places with any of you that can't. So uh, I'm not going to ask that. But uh, I represent the 14th Legislative District. I've had the privilege of doing that for the last six terms. The 14th Legislative District comprises all of Ohio County and the eastern part of Davis County. During that time, I've worked hard to reflect the values of Ohio County and advance the priorities of Ohio County in the Kentucky General Assembly. And with your help, I'd like to go back to continue working in those areas. I want to work to advance job creation and job retention. Fortunately, our state unemployment rate is coming down in Ohio County has now one of the lower unemployment rates in Kentucky. But we can never rest until every individual that wants a living wage and a job has a wage and has an opportunity to do that. I want to fight to continue to create those jobs and those opportunities. I want to go back and strengthen education, which is so important for our future. Our most important asset in Kentucky, I feel, are our young people. We've got to make sure that they have the skills and the knowledge to be successful when they go forward, to be able to represent and build their families and build a career. And I was fortunate to work on some education. We finally funded some more money for the classroom this term, put money in class books, textbooks, which we haven't done in eight years. We gave a raise to probably one of the more important parts of education delivery, and that's the teachers. And like Brandon said earlier, I was pleased that I was able to get some money in to fund an electrical teacher for the Advanced Technology Center. You know, everybody isn't destined to go to college. It's great if they can get a bachelor degree, but everybody is not cut out for that. But we need to make sure that everybody has a certificate or an associate degree or a talent so that they can be employable. And that's what we continue to need to do. I want to go and continue working on our road structure. We were fortunate in this budget uh, to put some significant money for roads in Ohio County, which are not only important for our convenience and our safety, but they're important, Lewis, for our commerce. So we've got some money in there to put a new entrance into Bluegrass Crossings, Marty, to make that more attractive for industry to come in there where they don't have to compete with residential traffic and the buses. We've got more money put in to improve the road between Hartford and Centertown, which you all know desperately needs that. We've got more money in the budget uh, to enhance the Livermore Road to make some of those bridges wider when those Purdue trucks come across there to make that safety safer. So I'm proud of the money that we got to put in there. While we're at the Senior Center, we need to certainly do more in putting money in a growing population, and that's our senior citizens. Between 2015 and 2030, we're going to have a 58% increase in the number of people in Kentucky that are between 70 and 74. And 81% of Kentucky's Medicaid dollars go for institutional care, not home care. Most of our seniors, they, they don't want to be in a home. They want to be at their home. We've got to continue to work to make that possible. Uh, and finally, uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, we've had... Uh, some concerns with partisanship and so forth. The last thing I think we need to do in the Kentucky General Assembly is import the Washington-style dysfunction and polar partisanship that we've seen. When I go out and talk to people every day, they say, why don't you all just work together, Les? Why don't you do something to get the job of Kentucky done, to get Ohio County's job done? Work together, accomplish purpose. I just pledge to you that if I'm fortunate enough to be reelected, I'll continue to do just that to reach across the aisle, to take care of the issues that are important for Ohio County, and to, and to take care of the issues that are important to Kentucky, not worry about who gets the credit, just get the job done. I think that's what people want. And finally, I just want to say, and you all know better than I do, this is a great community, a prideful community, a caring community. It's very passionate. You just go to any community affair, uh, it's very caring. But now, Everybody in Kentucky and everybody in the state knows who we already know. We have the most beauty here and the most talent. We have Miss Kentucky from Ohio County. 
I hope that you all let me use my leadership experience, my seniority, and my ability to communicate to work for you and make even Ohio County a better place to call home. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to come. Thank you for trying to track me down, make sure I got it, and that I could be here tonight. I appreciate it. I appreciate you all coming. I love Ohio County. I didn't know Ohio County a few years ago. I had driven through it, but I couldn't find my way around. Now, I can probably tell you, as one person said, I bet you know more about the streets in this county than I do, than I've lived here all my life. I said, I bet I do. I can probably find things that you can't find, because I have driven through these streets a lot, and I've really learn to love this place you all call home. I opened a business here a year ago in December. This December will be our first year to be in business at the corner of 3rd and Main Street. I bought a building that was 5,500 square feet that was reasonable to buy. Uh, we've enjoyed revitalizing that building, turning it into a business that's been fun has been becoming profitable, that we've gotten to meet people that come into the shop and we have a good time. I want to see more of that in this area. I want to see more people get an opportunity to do a, a business or whatever dream they have, that they can put it into action in this county and make it come to life. I love the tourism aspect of Ohio County. I love your festivals. I have been to a lot of festivals in the last few days. <laughs> and they've all been so good, so much fun. I love to travel, and I love that you have a place in Ohio County people can want to come to, that we can promote and develop and, and see things like trail towns here and see things like the, the festivals that people are coming to to be a part of. Those things are all such a plus that this county already has underway. And it's just going to be fun to see it continue to develop. I also want to be available to help push back against the EPA. It's determined through our uh, president's direction to destroy the coal industry. I really like having reasonable electricity. I like those conveniences. I don't want the coal industry destroyed, and I don't want to see Ohio County people put out of work because of that. I'd also like to see us push back against federalization of our school systems. Uh, the very best control of a school is local. In the classroom, the teacher knows what's best in her classroom. In the school, the principal knows what's best in her school. In the county, the superintendent or the, the county boards know what's best for the school. Washington does not know what's best for Ohio County schools. I can guarantee you that. So those are areas that I would like to see us actively be involved in. I'd also like to make sure that Ohio County always and forever retains the title of the home of bluegrass. Davis County is just right over the border, but that's really an Ohio County thing. And I think that that should be honored and cherished and continue to be a part of Ohio County. Now my vision for the office because they told us we should share our vision for Ohio County and then share our vision for this office. Well, I do have a vision for this office. I know it's bigger than this maybe, and I know that there are a lot of important issues, but the vision I have is to be in the House of Representatives in January and vote for the pro-life bills that will save babies' lives. That's the vision I have. That's what I want to be a part of, not just for uh, in one area, just for our district, for the state of Kentucky, and ultimately for this country. I really honestly believe that all the other things will come in line, the economic development, the uh, wasteful government, we a lot of things out there that we're all concerned about, but I think they'll come in line so much better if we'll get that one issue straightened out. Because I honestly do not believe God can continue to bless and protect a nation that legally kills its babies. 56 million babies lost a chance to live in the last 40 years. 56 million. I think that the day will come, if we don't stop that, that 
that God will look away from this nation, and when he does, there are those out there that you already know are lying on our borders ready, waiting to take over and to destroy the United States of America. So I want to see us begin in Kentucky this January to start a movement that will go all through Kentucky and ultimately across this nation where we say we value life. for Kentucky State Senate, Republican candidate C.B. Emory Jr., Democratic candidate William Cobb. And he got the one. <laughs> Glad to be with you tonight and thank you very much for putting this together and thank you so much everyone for coming and, and taking part in this event. I'm C.D. Embry. I'm running in the 6th District. Um, the district is four counties, 115,000 people, 110 miles across. I think the main issues are uh, who can uh, best serve this area and who has the leadership to do so. Uh, some of the things I would like to do job development. Uh, we must uh, create more jobs. I serve on the Economic Development Committee and the Education Committee in Frankfurt. We can develop jobs through education. The future of the Commonwealth of Kentucky depends on the educational training and opportunities our youth and adults receive. And by do getting that, those opportunities and training, we can develop jobs. We must protect our coal jobs. We have lost over 7,000 jobs in the last six years in the coal industry. Uh, I have a, over a 40-year record of, or, of supporting coal miners and uh, a 12-year record in the General Assembly of voting 100% of the time on behalf of uh, issues that support Kentucky coal and coal miners. I also uh, strongly support Second Amendment rights. Okay, let's get to uh, leadership and who can best serve. Uh, I have uh, served on the local level as mayor of Beaver Dam. Uh, the, uh, uh, my wife of six, uh, 52 years uh, and I grew up in Beaver Dam. We uh, went to school there. We have been property owners and taxpayers in Beaver Dam for over 50 years. I also have served on the county level. Uh, you allow me to be your judge executive three terms. Uh, this building is sitting in the part that uh, our fiscal court, uh, along with the Chamber of Commerce and Industrial Foundation and Peabody Co., uh, made possible for this uh, building to be in this park that uh, was created during my term. I have also uh, served six terms in the Kentucky House of Representatives. Uh, uh, and it, uh, uh, during that time I've been in the minority in the House it's, it's very difficult to get things done and pass the majority leadership in, in the House and in the Senate control what bills are voted on and uh, which ones are discussed and what committees you serve on and who the chairmen are uh, I've been in the minority uh, that, that's, that's a difficult thing However, in the state senate, my party is in the, in the majority, and there I would, uh, with my seniority, would have the uh, option of uh, the key committees and would have much more uh, ability to make sure Ohio County in the 6th District gets the funds they need for roads and bridges, schools, uh, water districts, uh, special projects. The leadership in the Senate is uh, uh, are four men. The uh, uh, President of the Senate, Robert Stavers, the uh, Majority Floor Leader, Damon Thayer, the Caucus Chairman, Dan Syme, the uh, Whip, uh, Robert, uh, Brandon Smith, are all good friends of mine. We have served together in the General Assembly for 12 years. 
they're not only good friends of mine, but uh, they've all donated to my campaign. So uh, it's clear that uh, uh, I would have uh, key committees much uh, stronger position than a freshman member in the minority who would have no chance of being a committee chairman. Um, also, during my lifetime, I have served uh, and been elected chairman or president of 16, 16 different uh, uh, organizations on the local level, regional level, state level. Uh, things like JC's, RC, uh, uh, JC's, uh, Lions Club, uh, Fish and Game Club on the local level, PTA. Uh, on the regional level, uh, chairman of the Green River Area Development District. On the state level, uh, state chairman of the Cole County Coalition where David Martin and I uh, worked to uh, to get uh, uh, some laws passed to share money with the uh, local governments. <coughs> It would be my pleasure to continue to serve you and use my uh, seniority and, and uh, leadership to uh, help Ohio County and this district. I humbly ask you for your vote and support. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. There you go. Uh, I could say something that uh, we say the best for last, but that would be, uh, uh, I don't know if that would be true or not. So I do know that I'm maybe the, the, the only person standing between you and the door. So I will uh, be mindful of that as I speak. My name is Will Cox. I'm a uh, Democratic nominee for the State Senate. Uh, Mr. Embry was correct that the district is comprised of four counties, Hopkins, Muhlenberg, Ohio, and Butler and I'm here tonight to ask for your vote and support. Uh, this race is really about, I agree with Mr. Embry on one thing, we, uh, it's about who has the ability, the leadership, a uh, proven record of effective leadership to best serve the citizens of Ohio County. And in this race, uh, quite frankly, uh, I believe I'm the right person. I'm also, I was very pleased to hear some candidates talk about running positive campaigns. Uh, we heard that from multiple candidates tonight. Uh, I ran in a primary against an Ohio County resident, Doug Smith, who I believe is here. I saw him come in. And he and I never said a crossword about each other. We focused on the future and not the past. And we talked about the way to move these four counties forward. Now, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Embry has chosen to take my race down a different path. If you turn on the radio or look in your mailbox, you'll see that, uh, again, he's chosen to take our race down a different path. He didn't do it here tonight, but he's done it on the radio for the last week and a half, and he's done it in your mailbox, and he's gonna do it again in your mailbox. And so, I would say to you, uh, when he rattles off about uh, all the support he's got in the Senate Republican Caucus, and who has contributed to him, and who has guaranteed him uh, committee chairmanships, my question would be, what was the cost of that? If anybody, I know he's, uh, uh, some, some UMWA folks are supporting him actively. Uh, they say that he will be against right to work. Uh, he'll be the only Republican in the Senate that will be against right to work. And I'm just curious how long he'll be right against right to work when his committee chairmanship is at stake. And that's just the cold hard fact. Um, so I intend to stay positive. I will defend myself, and we'll be uh, uh, coming up. You know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not a punching bag for the Republican Party, and don't intend to be. I won't be a punching bag in the Kentucky State Senate for the Republican Party either. I will fight hard for Ohio County the same way I fought hard for the citizens, citizens of Madisonville when I was their mayor. I reduced the debt in the city of Madisonville in four years by $5 million. I was interested to hear the judge say he's reduced it by half a million. I reduced it by $5 million. Uh, I won two national awards uh, for the work that the city of Madisonville did during the ice storm. I don't have to tell you uh, folks in Ohio County what that was like. Uh, and so uh, I restored integrity to, 
integrity to the Massimo Police Department evidence room. Uh, I've been over backwards working hard every single day, whether that was in Frankfurt or Washington or anywhere else I needed to go to fight for my citizens. That's the kind of state senator that I will be for Ohio County. Tommy was exactly right, and others have been exactly right tonight when they talked about jobs and what it takes to get them. I can tell you that in my four years as mayor, every time I met with an economic development prospect, whether they were from out of state or coming to Madisonville or trying to grow and expand in Madisonville, they basically had two questions that they wanted to know and you had to answer. The first question was, do you have land that has infrastructure in place or reasonably close to it and do you, that I can put my building on or is there already a building in place? And if the answer to that is no, then they get in a plane or get back in their car and they go to the next stop. The second question is, do you have an educated, healthy, drug-free, trained workforce that will show up on time and, and help me get my product assembled and out the door in a profitable manner? If the answer to that question is no, then they get back in their car or get back on their plane and they go to the next stop. And so education, we've heard it tonight, education, infrastructure, those are vital for job creation. On the education side, if we don't give children a quality education, whether it's a four-year degree, a two-year degree, a technical degree, a certificate, then they're not going to get a quality job. I ask for your vote on November 4th, and I'll be glad to look forward to talking to you tonight and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. sheriffs I guess so you have two minutes to answer the question we're just going to start with representative Thompson and go down the line Thank you. <laughs> and the question is do you support a local option sales tax and do you support a gasoline tax okay real quick local option sales tax some kind called lift local initiatives for transformation <coughs> is a vehicle that 37 other states presently have. The design of it is to let local people make local decisions about the quality of place of their community. The way it would happen, if it passed in the Kentucky General Assembly, we would have to put a constitutional question on the ballot to let you vote as to whether or not we would do that. If it passed at the state level in a constitutional ballot form, it would then be a referendum locally. So like in the case of Ohio County, the, the judge and the mayors would come up with some economic, some specific, specific education, or excuse me, economic development questions, projects, that, and what the cost was, and then it would be put on the ballot to see if the citizens of Ohio County wanted to impose a anywhere up to one-tenth to one-penny increase in the sales tax for that project to enhance the quality of life in your community. It would be a, the essence of home rule, where local people make a local decision about their future. I think that's a good idea when we let local people decide what kind of quality of place they want to have. Secondly, uh, on the issue of the gas tax, uh, it, there's some real misnomer out there. The Kentucky Legislature, the House of Representatives, did not vote to increase the gas tax by $60 million, as you're seeing on TV. We voted to freeze the floor. And by not being able to freeze the floor, because our folks and our friends on the other side decided not to do that, we lost $107 million in road money that would have gone to every city and county in Kentucky. Did any of you all see the results of the winter on what it did to the roads in Kentucky? And now as the judge and others know, they're having to take money out of their general fund to fund their road funds because we didn't get that $107 million. I don't want more money in a gas tax going to the oil companies. I want money coming back into Ohio County to fix the roads. So I'm, uh, I'm for freezing the level because it's good for roads in Kentucky. Gas tax. Simply. You're welcome to come to the microphone. That's fine. I can just simply, but going back to lift, like you said, that's the local. Explain it to you. We're sitting in a senior center, and this is what it would be. If you wanted a senior, if the, the county wanted, after it went through the state, you passed until we give us the permission to do the tax. It would go on, it would put up to 1%. Say we wanted a senior center, we didn't have one. Okay, what we would do is 
we would say we're going to put the tax uh, towards the uh, senior center here. We would educate you guys. This is what we're going to use the money for. It's only on, if my understanding's right, until the senior center's paid for. They would just tax you until the senior center's paid for. So it'd be 1% on until it's paid for. But here's the catch. We want the senior center, we want to put this on you, but we've got to ask you. It's got to go to you. Once we educate you and say, here's what we're going to use the money for, after a certain amount of time, once the center's paid for, the tax is lifted. You don't have the tax on you anymore. So we would have to educate you and say, we want this, here's the reason we want it. It would go to the polls. The public would vote on this. Okay? So if it's something we want, you might think it's not the best idea. And we're trying to educate you. We're trying to tell you it is. But you had the final say on it. Yes, I would be for the, the lift tax. And, uh, because it's something you could have for your community. We're going to educate you about it and say this is why we need it. But you would have the final say on it. Yeah, uh, the, like, like exactly the way Jason and Tommy has tried to explain, done a very good job of it. You know, as right now we're seeing a amphitheater built in Beaverdam. You hear all different sides, whether it's good or whether it's bad. There was a 3% tax added to the restaurants. And you have to pay it. You didn't have an option of what it went to. So I can say for this, at least the people will have an option whether it's good or whether it's bad. The county and the city and local government, everything we do is forced upon you. I mean, the, the things that we do is not by your choice, it's because of law has been made or taxes have been placed. At least this will give the opportunity for the, for the citizens to have their voice heard. That's, that will, at least for one thing, will, they will be a part of this project, whether it works or not, and they will have the opportunity to go to the polls. So hopefully it would turn out voter turnout. So it, it's it's up first of all it's left at the state and to enable the counties to do that. Then it's left up to the people to enable the government to do that. So I think the local option is the same as, as a lot of people will talk about uh, whether we should be wet or dry. That's the best thing. It's left to the people of the community. It's not left to the government. Most everything else that you have, your taxes are set by the government, you have to abide by. So this is the, the perfect opportunity to let it be back into the people's hands of whether or not you want a certain project. The gas tax, that is a quite complex formula, and our gas tax is, what a, is, is a big portion of what funds our county roads. So there's a, a lot of misconception whether or not and I don't understand it all completely, thoroughly. Tommy could give you a lot more information. But the gas tax, to, to keep it from going below where it is now, it's based off wholesale gas prices. As far as the taxes, I'm not necessarily for exceeded taxes. We're all hardworking people. We don't want to be having to pay more taxes coming off of our dollar and costing us in our income. However, I know taxes are a very vital way in, in getting the income that you can use locally and, you know, to build our county and make it more efficient and a better place to live. The good thing it sounds like is it'll be up to you ultimately to make the decision and I think that's the way it needs to be. The gas tax uh, don't know a whole lot about it. I will have to talk to, to Tommy and some other people about that information. But I think that you know it sounds like it's all going to be left up to local to vote their opinion on it. So that sounds like they're giving you the chance to get educated on it and find out which way you want to view your opinion on it. Thank you. I support lift or the local option tax. I think it's vital that Ohio County residents get the opportunity to decide what level of taxation they want to pay for what kind of projects they want to have. Particularly with the coal severance revenues dwindling, those projects are going to, projects that are currently being funded with coal severance dollars, that money may evaporate. And so those dollars are going to have to be replaced. The beautiful thing about this is if Ohio County doesn't want to pay the tax for the project, they don't have to pay it. Nobody's making them pay it. 
they're going to vote for it themselves at the ballot box. And I think that's, in, in my, as a former mayor, you can't get any more local or conservative than that than letting the people that are directly affected make the decision. On the gas tax, uh, Tommy hit the nail right on the head. I support setting a floor for the tax. You know, everybody likes to brag about uh, how many dollars are in the budget for the, all the road projects and all the bridge projects and all the ferry projects that are in the budget for their counties. But some people don't want to set the floor on the tax. But they like to go to the check presentation, but they don't want to pay for it. And so I think it's vital that we set the floor so it drops, so it doesn't go below it, and we can continue to, to take care of our roads and bridges and ferries and other things that we need to take care of. I think it all goes back to education, myself included. I think a lot of citizens don't know a lot about this, and like I said, myself included. But what these citizens are going to hear, the only word they're going to hear come out of your mouth is tax. That's it. That's all they catch. They don't catch what it goes for. They don't catch what it what it's going to do. They hear tax, and that's it. That's where you got them, and that's all they remember. If you walk in there and give them a 30-minute spill and explain this to them, you walk out their house, they're going to tax me. That's all they hear. Uh, you know, I need to learn more about it myself. I think we're taxed enough, uh, but like I said, I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, this county, uh, I remember when people used to live paycheck to paycheck. People are not even living paycheck to paycheck anymore. If they was, you wouldn't see cash advance places popping up all over this county. And I'm not discriminating anyone that works there, or uses them, or whatever. That's your business. But you wouldn't see those popping up. Those buy here, pay here, the cash advances. If people were making it, and all they're going to hear is tax. I think it will be left up to the public to decide and get educated and make their own decision and put it on the ballot. Has anybody ever seen a tax go away? You look at your phone bill, your water bills, you look at every bill that you've got and your tax. There's some tax here on your insurance bill, uh, your property tax. I'm not in favor of any more taxes, period. When you're living on a fixed income, your tax and you look at your taxes, you're paying a lot of money in taxes. The gas tax that he's talking about, I don't know much about it, but the state itself, I don't remember what it was. How much money did the state uh, lose last year? In the whole budget? Yes. 90 million. 90 million. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like they need a tax to bring it out, but evidently that's not what it's used for. It's to be used for local. But as I said, I don't know that much about it, but uh, the state's spending a whole lot more money than it's receiving. And, but I'm not in favor of raising any more taxes. I just think we need to cut some stuff to make some of those uh, concessions. Well, I have to agree that I'm not in favor of taxing. I hear, just like you said, when you say this, that's what I hear. You're going to tax me some more. And I know that taxes don't go away. I, can anyone in here ever point to an, a time that you were taxed and it left at some point? Once you're taxed, you're taxed more. It doesn't just go away at some point. So it would be very difficult to support more taxing. What I would like to see happen is I'd like to see our government look into its wasteful spending and see if we can't cut back. I'm not talking about cutting programs that are needed. I'm talking about looking at duplicity and waste and, and, and pure misappropriation of, of funds that, that they do have. Uh, so I have to say I'm not in favor of a tax. Local option is a wonderful part of it, but I'm just not in favor of taxing us more. I think we have to get away from tax, borrow, and spend. That's what uh, happens. Uh, Frankfurt, and uh, we need to uh, move away from that. The uh, local option sales tax, uh, uh, you would have different taxes in different towns, different counties. It would be very hard to keep up with. I like the part that the local people vote, but uh, uh, I think uh, we're probably taxed enough. So, uh, unless uh, I had clear inf uh, information from my constituents that this is what they wanted. And I answer not to Franklin politicians, but to my constituents, uh, you know, uh, I think it would be a, a bad thing. Now, the uh, gasoline tax, uh, we passed a law, I think in 2008, where it goes up and down depending on the cost of, uh, of gasoline. And uh, it hit kind of a peak. Uh, 
last year, and then when the gas prices went down, uh, it was supposed to go down. Uh, that's what we passed. It's, it would go up and down uh, with the cost of gas. Uh, they're wanting to set the floor at where it is when it hit the highest part. part. Uh, that would set it at the highest rate it's ever been. And uh, uh, we have one of the highest gasoline taxes in the nation now, in the top 20. Uh, I don't know how many of you would like to go to the gas station and pay more for your gas. If you do, you know, raise your hand. Tell me, tell me you'd like to pay more. Uh, I don't think uh, you would. So I'm against the gasoline tax being set at the highest it's ever been. I think we all let it go back down like we passed the law in 2008 and live within the means of the money that we have. I don't, when I talk to citizens that go door to door, uh, one of the first things they tell me is, are you going to raise my taxes? Because they don't want it done. Okay, let me uh, go to the gas tax first. Uh, our county receives our a share of the gas tax based on something called the FIFS formula, which is uh, pretty complicated. I've been studying it for four years now, and uh, I kind of got it in my mind, but I, I would have trouble explaining it right now. But that's how it's figured. Um, and with the floor not frozen, uh, our county lost tens of thousands of dollars uh, in road money because that floor not being frozen. So without raising the tax, I am for the, the uh, floor being frozen, which means that our revenue from the gas tax cannot decrease below a, a certain point. And, and I, I'm for that. Uh, also, local option taxes, I'm for that as long as the folks want it, we'll have it, as long as you've got a choice. Uh, in our history in Ohio County, some of you will remember, most of you are not old enough to remember, but the county in the 60s imposed a uh, library tax on, on themselves that was generous enough that our library won't have to worry about exceeding that for many, many years. Uh, and it, and it was, as a large uh, majority of the people voted for that. Well then, several years later, the county, the fiscal court, and others imposed a tax on the citizens to fund the ambulance service. Well, the voters got up a referendum and removed that tax from themselves. So that's a case where a tax was put on themselves and removed from themselves. So I think that uh, I think it would be good to have that option if you had a project in the county that you wanted to see done and you was willing to pay for it, and that the uh, uh, the term they use is, is sunset, but the term I would use for it to play out tax to play out when the project was finished, I'd be all about it. Thank you. <coughs> this question is for the two sheriff's candidates. What about a program in the high school for deputy training like ROTC? Sheriff, <coughs> I, I don't think that that would be a, a problem. The only problem is I too basically have talked with the superintendents and teachers and the curriculum that we teach in our schools right now is pretty tight. It's tight because I talked about putting there by Kim. Of course, back in 1998, excuse me, the federal government uh, put funding there, if I'm, not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, because it doesn't reach all the kids that it's supposed to reach. It only reaches uh, fifth graders. So the research that we did look at and that the, the federal government looked at is that there generally was a great tool, but it was not a end all thing. It was not, not the best thing. So what we have in the schools now, what I talk to the folks about is, is going pretty well. The curriculum's too thick, you can't add anything else into it. But I don't know that the school is the place to have a training ground for veterans. I think that needs to be done at the law enforcement agencies. Uh, as far as programs for that. So uh, uh, I, I don't think the school's a place for it. I just think if there's going to be a program and the people want the program and we had the resources to do it, that needs to be done within the sheriff's office with the law enforcement agencies. Uh, 
question again for me. It says, what about a program in high school for deputy training like ROTC? Uh, uh, I'm going to have to agree with you uh, You know, I, I don't think our sheriff's office would be the place to, to have any training. We have talked about uh, uh, putting in place a ride-along program uh, as the state police has. We've kind of looked at their ideas, but we're still kind of looking at the liability issues. You know, if we get out there and you know, we pull up on a call and we have someone in the vehicle with us and we have a, a you know some type of shooting, God forbid, uh, where where would the liability uh, lay on our property? So. Uh, I, I would say that it would go back to some type of uh, community, um, uh, a community academy, so to speak, where they could ride with us, see what we do, kind of look at look at the way we operate, uh, rather than a training program. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Sheriff's Department, Hay 9 teams. I want to let uh, Mr. Beatty go first this time. For, uh, you know, I, I have, I've been a policeman here for 20 years, and we never had, until I worked for the sheriff, uh, uh, we weren't ever, ever able to afford a canine in our department. Uh, we always went back to the hardcore, uh, let's train our guys what to look for, we got out and worked. We found our drugs. Uh, I, I didn't really need a, a canine to help me find narcotics, any kind of drugs that we worked on. So I would have to look at the cost versus what has been found. Uh, and I, I would I would go back to more training in my deputies rather than focusing more on uh, canine. Personally, if we had the resources and we had funding, I'd have a canine in every office <coughs> throughout the county because there's a lot of times these deputies in rural counties are out there answering calls by themselves. And just that dog being in the back seat of that car barking is enough to calm a situation or to make somebody think twice about overtaking that officer and such. And when it comes to the drug work, a, a, a dog's nose is about 600 times, 400 times more stronger than a human's nose. So when these folks that are transporting narcotics across the roads, they're hiding them in their, in their houses, and they, they, they're good at it. They'll put it in peanut butter, they'll put it in pickle jars, they'll do whatever. It's, it's not humanly possible for a deputy or a human being to find that stuff. So we use those dogs to sniff out those narcotics. That's what they're for, and they're used all across the United States and all over the dang world. Thirdly, what they do most importantly, as far as I'm concerned, is they foster a great relationship with our children in the high schools. We're in the high schools every, all the time with these dogs. We were in two schools, I think, last week, where we're not riding uh, twice. And what it does is not only do they get, they like the dogs and they see what they do, but it gives us an opportunity to spend some time with those children. When they see us at the Walmart or the restaurants, they know that we're the canine cops and, and, and it's easy for them to approach us. So those dogs are used for not only just for doing drugs, but they're doing for safety purposes of the personnel and also doing to foster relationship with the children. Okay, I think we have time for about one more question and then we're going to break it up and we'd like everybody to stay and talk to our candidates one on one. All right, this question I would say it would be for the judge and the magistrates. This year, large amounts of discretionary funds were given to the magistrates. Do you believe there should be an annual cap on these funds, and how much should it be? I want to start with the judge and go this way this time. Okay. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the choice of the entire fiscal court, how that's done. Um, so uh, I wouldn't want to set a cap on it. It has to do with the availability of uh, monies. Uh, 
we already had a certain uh, coal severance fund that has always been used or was already being used when we came into office as uh, discretionary money. And then Magistrate Cowan uh, came up with the plan that, hey, uh, our coal severance quarterly checks now is $185,000 from the LGEA fund. There are several coal severance funds, but the LGEA. Uh, and his motion was to, uh, hey, if this goes up, let's keep, let's take half of this and put it in the in the uh, road fund, and half of it in the master's discretionary fund. Judge, they're saying they can't hear you. Okay, I'll back up just a little bit to answer the question. Uh, yes, I think it's a it's a good thing we have. It gives the master's a chance to uh, uh, to use uh, the money. Most of their discretionary money comes from what we call the excess 185 money, which was proposed by Master Larry Crown. And he said if our coach, uh, LGEA funds go up, that we take that money, take half of it and put it in the road fund, and half of it in the Master's discretionary fund, which a large portion of that is used on roads as well. Uh, and, and I think it's a good thing because that gives each Master the, the tool to... Uh, to work in the community. Uh, the judge executive, is the way it goes now, does not have a discretionary fund from that. I do have a road discretionary fund uh, that's separate, but not from uh, not from this. But I think it's a good idea that we have it. And the way our motions is on the floor and the way we're operating, uh, the, the amount we have to go in it caps itself because it's based on the amount of revenue coming from that account from the state. I didn't know that since some of these magistrates are not really familiar with that may not be able to fully explain their position on it. Uh, yes, we've been blessed to have a lot of excess coal severance money and, and for the most part uh, I think that should be left to the magistrates to do the things in their communities. But on the other hand, uh, I think the things that they're spending it on should be researched like I was at uh, speaking of earlier and make sure that the things they're spending it on is sure enough uh, an asset and not just a continual liability and and I've done some study and some research and, and it's in my opinion that the chip seal is maybe not the efficient way to go when you look at it for a, for a five-year period so first there'll be some standards if I was elected to judge some standards that the procedures would be followed so that your money is being spent so that it will last. Secondly, I think and the only way to truly improve your quality of roads for the long term, you need to, you need to put a cap on maybe 50% of your money can be spent on chip seal. The other 50% should be spent on asphalt because I think the asphalt in the long run is a lot more economical and efficient way to spend your money. So that's kind of a mixture. I, I don't have a, a plan of putting a cap on their discretionary money, but maybe a little bit of, <coughs> of a plan and, and to make it more efficient, to make it last longer. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Like I said, because Brian, uh, as far as the cap, not necessarily. Um, the discretionary is up to the judge, I mean up to the uh, matters. We all have our discretionary, we get each quarter, okay? One, uh, Judge Johnson explained after the 185,000 comes in, half of it goes back into the road fund, the other half is divided up amongst matters. Each, every three months, it, it could be different. It's varied from 16, 16 to seven. It just goes as much, you know, it depends on your cost, each year tonnage. So each quarter we get a different uh, discretionary check. It's based on what we want to use, use it for. You give, uh, I've used my fire department Use mine for the police department in Beaver Dam. I've used it for uh, the park in Beaver Dam. I use it for roads because we don't get the road money we need. We have a large county and it's hard to go over. As far as chipping seal, I've not chipped and sealed in four years. I feel like asphalt will go a lot farther and I feel like I've gone along. I, we, we've made a lot of progress in the second district when it comes to roads. We've been blessed this year with additional monies. So, uh, I haven't chipped and sealed in four years, but I think asphalt's better. You you get what you pay for it in the long run. 
if you just wait a little bit longer, save your money and put asphalt on the road, your roads will be better off. But as far as discretionary, no, I think there's great things that we're using them for. Like I said, uh, if I want to give something to my fire department, they come to us, I'm, I'm able to. If I want to give something to the Beaverdale Police Department, we just purchased uh, guns the other day. They needed some help with brand new guns. I was able to help them out. Little League, uh, Beaverdale came to us. There was a safety net issue. Baseballs were coming over. I think some of us put our monies together and we, we put a safety net for it. it. There's additional things. The playground equipment at uh, Beaverdale, I was able to help purchase with that. There are some other things in the city of Beaver. And it's, it, it's good things that we can use our money and a different variety of things to uh, help our community look better and to uh, yeah. real fun. Okay, if any, starting on that end, if any of the others would like to address that subject, go ahead. As far as putting a cap on discretionary money, it sounds like there's really no way. It's set up as a percentage. It comes from other accounts. I don't think that there's any way that you could cap it. And uh, tell you tell you the truth, I don't think anybody out there in the locally in all the districts would want to cap it because it's the best way the masters have to help you individually in your districts on a local level with small projects like community parks, the fire department, the local cities where they need a little extra money to help finish a project that they've got want or they're wanting to start and finish and they just need that little bit of extra money that their masters can help them and help the locals. So I, I don't think you'd want to put a cap on it. Thank you. I'm glad, and I'm one of the new ones coming in if elected, so I'm, I'm like Joe and, and Larry here. I don't, I'm not up to speed on a lot of these numbers. I'm glad Jason kind of told y'all uh, a little bit about how discretionary works. And I don't know the, the, the whole story either. But I agree. I've, I've, I've said in those physical board meetings, and sometimes it seems like everybody wants a handout. There's always somebody there wanting money. But this allows, and I've seen all this happen, what Jason said about the, what he's done and, and other matters as well. It allows you to help your community, exactly what these other guys have said. I don't agree. That should, I don't believe there should be a cap on it. Um, you know, Unless the physical court decides and they want to make it a cap, then the, you know, vote on it. Uh, but that, you know, that extra money allows you to help your community, and, and, and it happens more often than not. That uh, wasn't too long ago. Was it the first tees raised several thousand dollars on their own and needed what? Just a little bit more, just just a little bit, and I and just needed a thousand dollars more. I think they raised like ten thousand or nine thousand, whatever it was. It doesn't matter. Uh, but just needed a little bit more, and the court was was able to do that. Was able to to help them with that last thousand dollars. And sometimes, you know, some of you, $1,000 may not be a lot, but for me it is, and, and, and I think for most people it is. So. I don't want to see them cap it either, because if they do, then I can't do the job that Jason has done. <coughs> Thanks for fixing all those roads. They really look nice. I was out there today and saw some. So. But uh, that would make uh, a new magistrate be able to get some things done, uh, like the old, or the other guys have done. So. Okay, uh, this time we're gonna we're gonna call it quits, but there's refreshments back there. I encourage if your candidates can stay, I encourage you to stay.